Hello and welcome to this week's, I sound like my channel, this week's Gardener's World. <laughs> hello, I should do a Monty John impression. He has a very calming, hello, welcome to this week's Gardener's <laughs> Anyway, enough messing. You can probably tell by my frizzy hair that we had a bit of rain situation. I never thought I'd get excited over moist soil. <laughs> <laughs> but my soil and my plants are happy. First of all, before we get into the video, I just want to say thank you because my past couple of garden videos, I got this like little notification thing and it says that this video is being shared outside of YouTube. So if you are sharing my video on a Sunday, whether it's like to a Facebook community, I can't see where it's being shared. So if you're sharing it like to, you know, your Facebook page or community or another, platform, social media, online. Thank you so much for the shares and welcome to anybody who's new and has stumbled across the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Welcome. Now, I bought some heukers. First of all, I bought a new pot for a hydrangea runaway bride that is not happy in my lovely rich clay soil. So I got some ericaceous compost. I'm gonna mix it in with some soil that I already have. And I'm gonna pot hydrangea Annabelle our runaway bride in a pot because my other hydrangeas that are in pots seem to do better. Then I got some lovely autumnal hued heucheras. Love the heucheras. They're just an unsung hero. They have a lovely evergreen leaf and they do get these nice long stemmed kind of flowers. The ones I got in the garden centre do have flowers on them. But even when they die back, it just gives you a lovely bit of colour. So the shady spot outside my door, I want to make nice and full. Nice and full. So we're going to do a bit of digging. But first, <laughs> today I'm going to have to wear my gloves because can you see? I got my nails done last night and I asked for nature nails. So can you see the little birdie? And I have a little flower, a love heart, a flower, how cute, and a mushroom, hang on, like how cute. So we we're going to wear the gardening gloves today because Elaine, she'll watch my YouTube video and she'll give out to me. She was doing my nails and she was like, girl, is this compost underneath your fingernails? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's get me shovel. And do a bit of digging. Also, look how big my sprouts are getting. Like, where does the sprout come? I feel like they might need support soon. Like, do the sprouts, like, come out the sides? I don't know. <laughs> this is all new to me. But yeah, sprouts, huge. Cabbage, I gave one away actually, I gave one to my friend. So this one I just left to get chomped because here was my theory. If I leave this one to get chomped, they'll leave the other ones alone and it's kind of worked. Look at this. These are just getting huge with the rain. Like, how cool is that? There was one here and I, I gave it to my friend Adele. I put it in a pot for her and I said, let that grow. But look at this, huge. Now, I have some Oh, okay. So I have some tomatoes. This one is ready. I'm going to take this off. Oh, it just fell. Actually, didn't Monty not say that in an episode of Gardener's World that if it just falls off, it's ready? Or did I just make that up? Um, here's another one here. Oh, that one's not falling off as easy. But oh, I feel like I'm the late, the last person to get tomatoes. I probably should have had them in the greenhouse, but Karen from chatting to her, she has had ripe ones for ages, but mine are only starting to ripen. Oh, this gives me joy. I think I'm gonna just eat it and see. <laughs> I feel like I'm eating it like strawberry, but I wanna taste how juicy it is. I probably should cut it up, put it on a bit of toast, but mm, kinda sweet. It tastes different to a shop bought one. Not bad different. I'm gonna take the little spider off. It tastes like sweeter. Yeah, it tastes sweeter than like a supermarket one. I can't believe I agree with that. <laughs> okay, enough tomato chomping. Also, something I've noticed with the good bit of rain that we're after having, I didn't plant nasturtiums this year. <laughs> 
about two or three years ago, my neighbour gave me a nasturtium and I killed it. And obviously it went to seed and the seeds must have just like lay dormant. But I put some nice soil conditioner, like I put bark and I think I put some like leftover manure that I had. So the soil is lovely. And like, look at all these nasturtiums that I have now. I think a nasturtium might be a climbing plant because they tend to want to, they're kind of stringy and go up. But um, they're still flowering at this time of year, so I'm just leaving them to do their thing. And like that, I'll just collect the seeds from them. But yeah, some nasturtiums running wild. And then yeah, there's a little bit of colour. I did a good bit of deadheading last week just to try and get, like I have loads of dahlia heads on them. And these, now with the evenings getting a bit darker, I don't know if like, they'll flower but I'm carrying on with the deadheading and then some flowers the last of them is gone there's a few of these random little ones but yeah I'm just drying out the seed heads but yeah a little bit of color over here still I've got some Rebecca's and Rabinas give me a bit of color and then just the pots oh nearly fell over <laughs> just my autumnal pots there giving me a bit of color little bit of a haul <laughs> so I got this pretty pot which I already have what have I got in this I think the, I have a the eucalyptus in a pot like this so I'm gonna put this oh Miss Blondie would you like to win the pot I'm gonna put this hydrangea runaway bride into a pot and I'm gonna mix in like some ericaceous soil and see if she will do better this year. I think my soil is just too rich and she doesn't, it's like this flowered for a little bit, but not the way it's kind of supposed to. So I'm gonna take it out then. This is, so I already had this euchre, this one and this one. I got two more purples and I got two, um, what would we call these? Yellowy ones? <laughs> You can tell I don't know the horticultural Latin. So I got two of these. What's your name? Heuchera Sweet Tea. Heuchera Sweet Tea. And what's your name, my friend? Talk to me. These ones are called Shanghai. So Sweet Tea and Shanghai. I don't know if my the one I already have that looks a bit more greeny. I think I planted that in like February or March. Have this one about three years. Don't know the um, name of that one, but, oh, I also got a bunch of cabbages. <laughs> the autumnal like ornamental kale. So I thought I could just do a grouping of them just to add a little bit of color. And then, yeah, they'll last the winter. So I wanna just fill this up a bit more with some evergreen colour. This is a shaded spot. And very soon, very, very soon, all of these leaves are gonna start making their way down here. <laughs> so while, while I can enjoy it, I'm gonna plant these in. So yeah, that's my job for today. This is why I don't wear gardening gloves. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think there's a spider in there, do you? broke a little bit off when I was removing it. Oh, hang on. But there's like a tiny, 
hang on, my mucky glove is on. There's a tiny root system and I'm gonna see if I can stick this into a pot. Hang on. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can make a second plant. And I'll see if by sticking it into a pot with some compost and some water and some love, <laughs> if I can grow a second one. So this is looking a little bit fuller than it did a few minutes ago, isn't that right Miss Blondie? So I wanted to get a bit of ground cover and if you remember what was the lesson I learned this year, plant in groups of threes. So I have kind of tried to do that, <laughs> kind of. So that's a little grouping of three. This is my existing one and I didn't want to plant them too close because they do spread out a bit. I've Two of them there, this was just an empty space and there was nothing there and the soil was really good actually because a lot of the mould, the sorry, the wood chip had, you could see that it was starting to break down. So I hope they'll be happy in there. This is, I think, a bleeding heart. It was already there and I'm going to see if I can maybe take a cutting or divide it and then make another one. What else? I'll just pop the cabbages there for a little bit of fun because my front door is here. So, Blandy, would you I, actually? I think the door is locked, Blandy. You'll have to go around the back. <laughs> You'd swear she'd no way to get in. Um, 
So yeah, when I walk out, I have a bit of fullness and then a bit of colour. And hopefully I'll have a little bit of colour for a winter. Uh, Clematis Winter Beauty has had some growth. It's a slow grower, so we'll see. But at least there is some new growth and it's doing okay. Existing Heuchera is this little chap. This is supposed to be... Well, there is new growth on it. I didn't want to move it because I planted it in March. Got a bit crispy when we had that hot summer. But I'll leave it and just see what it does. Um, if it's going to stay small, I could maybe move it to the front. But I'm just going to leave it for now. You're probably wondering why I have this gap. So Hydrangea Annabelle, that is behind here. I moved that, was it last week's video? or two? I think it might have been. And I have another hydrangea Annabelle down here and I was saying that up there is much sunnier and I want to move it. So I'm keeping this space free for her but I'm going to wait a little bit longer. But thankfully the one that I moved hasn't died. <laughs> so that's a sign. But I don't know if anyone can maybe help me. So see the way like this is, it's grown kind of wonky. Could be the location that it was in, but see the way that's like after growing that way and rubbing. So, yeah, hydrangea Annabelle. Maybe she's just not a fan of my garden and that's okay. <laughs> but I was thinking, I will try, I will move the other one. I was thinking if I have a lovely bunch of hydrangea Annabelle here, it'd be really pretty. If it still doesn't work next year, I will just give them away. Maybe she wants to be in someone else's garden, but I would like you to be in mine. <laughs> um, what else? A geum. I'm going to ask my neighbour to divide that and maybe have two plops of it there. But um, yeah, this is how it's looking in September, heading into more autumnal vibes, it's very autumnal vibes, but I'm just happy that it looks full, it's not as gappy as it was, and it will fill out. You probably noticed the jumper is on. It is a little bit cooler. I could feel it this morning. I got up at six to go to um, yoga class and I was like, nine degrees on the car. Where did that come from? I've noticed as well the the grass. Like I haven't, I think I cut the grass Sunday and I can't remember the time before I got it. It was over a week. I've noticed the grass growing is slowing down. Also, I've got, I have a new book. I pre-ordered this because creativity and nature sold. Nature and creativity. I, when I was in Istanbul actually, this popped up on my Instagram. Um, I pre-ordered it from the book center, which is like more of an independent Irish bookseller. I think they have three shops. Sorry, four. Waterford, Wexford, Kilkenny and Nace, but I did pre-order and buy this online. So the book I got is by Catherine Drea and it's called Solace, Solace. Solace. Solace in Irish, as means light. Solace. <laughs> means peace, does it? I don't know, it's made it up. So, writer and photographer Catherine Drea explores, I hope I'm saying that right, is it Drea? Explores the solace to be found in nature and creativity. She reflects on loss, the cycle of life and the healing power of family and community. How lovely is that? She muses on the joy of finding a place to call home, the escape that travel brings, and the exhilaration of plunging into our waters. All the while embracing the therapeutic power of observing the ordinary and the everyday. Now that, my friend, is a description. So I was sold, haven't read this yet, but loved the photography, the nature photography on the inside. There's a lovely, where's the shot of a bee? I think it was B and Heather. Oh yeah. No, I think it's in. Is that a B in, Al in an allium head? How stunning is that shot? Hang on, I'll see if my. Come on, camera. 
focus on the bee. <laughs> How beautiful is that? So congratulations on the new book. Can't wait to get stuck into this. I am, um, this garden video that you're watching now, I pre-recorded the day before I go on the Camino. Camino de Santiago, the way of St. James. You're probably sick of me mentioning it in videos and you're probably like, will you just go? Um, so I'm recording this the day before I leave. And I think I'm gonna bring this with me because there is no like internet, hence why I didn't post. Um, I paused for two uploads, the Thursday and the Sunday while I was away because I have, uh, some people have said, you know, the internet signal isn't great, which is good because you can unplug. So I think I'm gonna bring this with me um, in my case as something to read. Perfect on for my walk in submerged in nature, looking for a bit of a bit of creative inspiration. But just thought I'd share that book with you because if you're into nature and creativity, which is kind of what my channel is a little bit about, I think you'll enjoy that one. That's me for this week. One of my pals minds my house while I'm away and I hate leaving gardener jobs for non-gardeners. I've said this before in previous videos, but she will be pleased to know that she doesn't have to do really anything while I'm away because the garden is what it is. I kind of like this time of year. It starts to slowly slow down. It's not, it doesn't come to an abrupt stop. It's like it just slowly slows down, which I feel like that's kind of what we do as people, isn't it, coming into winter season. Still no sign of the leaves, so may I need to look back on my phone. Maybe it's more like end of October, I was getting all of the leaves. Because oh, you know I have the leaf flower ready and waiting and charged. <laughs> like, where is Maybe when I come back from my Camino in the next video, I'll have leaves. But, um, yeah, that's me for this video. How are you getting on in your early autumnal gardens? Are you kind of, I feel like I'm just pottering. I kind of like it though. Oh, you know what is actually gonna be happening soon? I texted Karen. I said, girl, we need to go on a spring bulb shopping. So I have an idea where the sunflowers were um, that had no spring bulbs in it last year. Only the first two beds did. And I think I'm gonna do a bed of red tulips, like really vibrant red tulips. I think they'd be nice. Yeah, anyway. I'm waffling now. I will see you in the next video. And if you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button, check out the other garden videos. I'll leave a link to the playlist around here and in the description. Regular viewers, cheeky thumbs up, and I'll see you all in the next one.